Google Bard is in many ways better than ChatGPT. Hi, I am Pixel Pia. I know that is a bold statement. But with the latest update of Google Bard, they have added many functions that you can't do in ChatGPT 3.5. Some of them you can do if you subscribe, get GPT-4, and take the time to find the best plugins for the functions. But in Bard, you have it all right there. So today, I want to walk you through the updates in Google Bard. So let's get right into it. So here we are in Bard. And we are going to start right away with a rather simple request. Can you write a letter asking my friend if she can take care of my dog George this weekend? And if you compare this to ChatGPT, you see that Bard do all the thinking before it presents the text. So here we go. Dearest friend's name. I hope this letter finds you well. I am writing to ask a big favor of you. And it goes on. With every query you do in Bard, you get three different drafts that you can look at and compare. When you have decided on which one you like the best, you just click on that. If you don't like any of them, you have a regenerate info here. But we are going to stick with this first one. If I realize here that I made a mistake in my initial query, I can go up to my query and hit edit text. And maybe it's not a dog. Maybe it's a cat. Next weekend, instead, we say update. And here we see, I'm writing to ask you if you would be able to take care of my cat, George, next weekend. And it put in the dates. At the bottom of this query, we can give it thumbs up, thumbs down, and we can modify. We can make it shorter, longer, simpler, more casual, or more professional. Let's see what happens if we choose more casual and it looks very similar and once again we have the three drafts but let's say that i am happy with this next to the modify responses we have a share and export and from here i can draft it in gmail so i can actually mail it right away and down here, open Gmail, and here we have our draft. I have to put in the email address to the person I am sending it to and put in my friend's name, my name at the end, and make sure if I need to change anything else. And if it's a different type of document, maybe it's a long research I have done, I can also choose to export it to Google Docs from here. On the left-hand side here, you see this query I had here about the email. I can, by clicking on these three little dots, go in and change the name of it. Cat sitting, rename. When you have worked with Google Bard for a while, you will have a lot, a lot of queries in here. So renaming them can be really important if you want to come back to them later on. Another thing you can do with things that you are actually working on right now and that you will have easily accessible is to click on these three little dots and pin it. And as you can see, it shows up in the section by itself up here, pin, and that will always be on top of all the chats you have had. Let's try a new chat. And this 
time, I am going to use the text in this email. We are going to copy it. This is an email from a mother to her son. It is like any letter talks about a lot of things, but there are also things that she asks him to do. So here we are going to say, can you create a to-do list from this email? And then I'm just going to paste in the text and hit the little submit button or enter on my keyboard. Bart is thinking. And here you see, you can't see the whole query up here. But if you click on the little arrow here, it expands the text. And there you can see that it has pasted all of that email. So here we have the answer. Sure, here is a to-do list. Check beach shares and umbrellas for condition, pack sunscreen and snacks, and so forth. But not just that, it has extracted all the tasks. But at the bottom here, here are some additional details about each task. Check beach share and umbrella for condition, and then it has added some information. Make sure the beach shares and umbrella are in good condition and don't need to be repaired or replaced before the trip. So Bard go a step further and add some things to be more clear on what your task is. Another thing we can do in Bard is Bard has direct access to the internet and can use the latest available information. So in this case, we are going to say create a table with the 20 largest cities in the U.S. in population. In a second column, add the number of people. If this was in ChatGPT, the cutoff date for information is 2021. Here we have it. The 20 largest city in the U.S. in population. Rank city population. And it goes on down to number 20, which is El Paso in Texas. Then it says at the bottom here, export to sheets. This new Integration with other Google Apps is why I love Bard. And here it opens it in a sheet. This can only be done, of course, with tables. But when you have it here, you can go in and work with it the way you work with any other sheet. Where does this information come from? We might need a source for this. The information I use to create the table comes from uni the United States Census Bureau. So if I need to add a source, if I use this information, Bard gave me the sources. Can you now do the same for Sweden? And here we have 10 largest cities in Sweden. Can you... Give me the source. The source of the information is Statista. There's a German company that collects and publishes statistics from a ver variety of so sources. And it is from July 2023. So there you see it's pretty accurate and recent information. And talking about Sweden. Let's see how Google Bard handles translations. And to save some time, I have, can you translate this to English? And here we have a saying in Swedish. It says, bättre än fågel i handen än tio i skogen. And while it works on the translation, let me tell you that Bard is available in more than 40 languages today. In the Swedish proverb, better than fågel i handen and tio i skogen, translates to a bird in the hand is worth 
two in the bush. And then it explains about the proverb. One thing to be aware of when we use Google Board for translation, especially when we use proverbs, is that it doesn't translate word by word, but we can ask it, is this a word by word translation? Can you give me one? The literal translation of better and fågel i handen and tio i skogen is better bird in the hand than ten in the forest. However, this translation does not capture the meaning of the proverb. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bushes is the dogmatic translation. So if you use it for translation, Make sure you tell it if you want an exact word by word or if you just want the gist of the text. One of the more interesting aspects of BARD that you don't have in ChatGPT is that BARD now includes Google Lens. And with this, we can, if you look here down at the little plus sign, you can upload a JPEG, a PNG, or WebP, and we are going to add this image. And I am going to ask it, what plant is this? And it goes out on the web and find information after it has analyzed the plant itself. And let's see what it comes up with. The plant in the image is a, okay, something in Latin, commonly known as the snake's head fritillary. It is a perennial plant and so forth. Now let's start a new chat. And once again, we are going to upload images, but it doesn't work with all types of images because they have built in some protection systems. Here I am uploading an image that I created in Midjourney. It is a little doll character, but it looks like a human. And let me see here. Can you describe this image? And as you will see, it can't do that for us. Sorry, I can't help with images of people yet. And the image has been removed. But there are still things we can do with images, not just ask what it is. Here is an image again that I created in my journey. And this is an image of fairies sitting on mushrooms. And it's very much fantasy. Can you write me a story in the style? of a hero's journey from this image. And here it should not identify any parts of the image as, so it should work very well. And here we go. Once upon a time, there was a young girl named Alice who lived in a small village on the edge of the dark forest. Alice was a curious and adventurous girl. And it goes on. Very nice little story here, but we can do more. Can you write the story as a horror story? Once upon a time, there was a young girl named Alice who lived in a small village. Let's see. Complete the quest. She was scared. This will... Oh, she has to meet the fierce dragon. Maybe a little bit more horror. Okay, can you now rewrite this in the tone of Abraham Lincoln? Fellow countrymen, I stand before you today to tell you a tale of horror, a tale of a young woman named Alice who was brave and determined but who met a terrible fate. So 
as you can see, by using images, you can not just identify them, get descriptions, get the headline, get an alt text if it is an image you plan to use on a website. You can also have Bard write stories in different formats. There is one more thing that I don't use, and that is coding and coding language. Let's ask Bard, can you write a list of all the coding languages you are capable of using? And here we go. Python, C, and then it says, I am still under development. I am learning new coding languages all the time. I am also able to learn new tasks and skills. So if you have a specific coding language or task that you want me to learn, I will do my best to accommodate your request. So there you have it. The reason why I think Bard, in many ways, are better than ChatGPT. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Until next time, bye.